Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, seeing you here. And I pray that you're having a great day. I pray that you're walking in the blessings of the Lord and that you love Jesus like you have never loved him before. Because I want to tell you something. He loves you and he loves me and he's looking out for us. I am so glad today that I'm born again and know who Jesus is. And listen to this. And that I know God's truth. And I know that God's truth is unchanging. The Bible says this. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 89, listen to this. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever your word is established. I want you to know, my friends, the truth of God will never change. The word of God will never change. This book before me, the Bible, it is God's established, settled truth. And we are living in a day now where men are literally, not figuratively, but literally, and it's not even uh, in a clandestine, clandestine way anymore, but it's out front. It's in your face. It's on the campus of universities. It's in, it's in, it's in our public school system in many of the private school systems. People are coming up with constructs. Yes. Different ways to reconstruct society, to reconstruct their own view of reality, morality, uh, uh, and righteousness. And people now are turning from biblical truth and making up their own truth as though people are gods themselves. Well, my friends, I want you to know that God's truth will forever stand. And when it's all said and done, the truth of God is going to outlast you and is going to outlast me. As a matter of fact, heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or one tittle of the word of God shall fail. And I want you to know, my friends, that the word of God is powerful, it is active, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And I want to encourage you to get in the word and stay there, stay there till he comes. We used to sing in church, get in the word and stay there, stay there till he comes. Whoa, get in the word and stay there, stay there till he comes. Well, I want to tell you, get in the word, get in the Bible and stay Stay there. Stay in it until he comes. Because what, whatever you're facing, whatever your dilemma, whatever you're up against, first and foremost, there's an answer in the word of God. I often say what I'm preaching. The Bible addresses everything. All you got to do is just read it. If we read the word of God, the word of God speaks to our situation. The word of God brings comfort to our hearts and minds. The word of God makes sense. So I don't have to create my own little world. I don't have to live in my own mind. I don't have to create my own um, reality, which is is not reality. It's just a constructing of something that is put together, a construction of my own mind, which literally means I'm deceiving those who believe me and I'm being deceived. I'm fooling my own self. I'm falling. Uh, I've read my own headlines. I'm falling for the lies that I've constructed. It reminds me of idolatry. And when it comes to idolatry, there can be no, nothing more stupid, nothing uh, more silly, nothing dumber than a man worshiping an idol or anything that he has made. Doesn't the very fact that you made it make you superior to it? Doesn't the, fact, the very fact that you named it uh, make you superior to it? Doesn't, doesn't the very fact that it's setting, it, it, it remains where you placed it. And if you move it, then you move it. Doesn't that mean that you're superior to it? And why would you try to create a God of your own imagination? Um, you know, and if, and if you have, and many have, and you've created your own morals, and you says no one can judge you, no one can tell you what's right, no one can tell you, tell you what's wrong. So I guess then your morals and your ethos change like the weather, because people generally do.
What people believe today, they don't believe tomorrow. How people feel today, they won't feel that way tomorrow. You know, but what, what never changes is the word of God. So I want to say to the pastors who are watching, I want to say to those, the church leaders, those of us who believe in holiness and righteousness, be encouraged. And by the way, I'm hearing from people all over the world. Thank you for those powerful words of support. You know, people said to me, one person said, Bishop Wooden, do you not know that uh, 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 there's a lot of people who are, who are against you? I said, yes, there is. But there's a lot of people who are for me as well. And more importantly, the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? So I'm grateful that I have the Lord on my side. One of my dear friends said to me, a Caucasian brother, he saw me at a restaurant. He says, man, you, you, you're going against the culture of your own people. Well, I don't know whether I'm going against the culture of my own people or not, but I do know this. I'm standing on the word of God. And if my people or any people walk away from God's word, I'm staying with God's word. What about you? My friends, let's hold to God's word. And I'll, I'm going to talk about this tonight because I will. I listen. God, the God of the Bible, wants you to keep a sane, strong and vibrant, healthy mind. It is not the will of God for you to be confused. It's not the will of God for you to be doubting about the way. It's not the will of God for you to be searching. It's the will of God for you to know. And I'm going to show you tonight, my friends, in the word of God, amen, why you want to stick with God's truth and reject these little constructs. The construct, Brother Garrett, is like the flavor of the month. They don't last long, and then once that one is dead, uh, then they have to come up with another one. And see, anything that's man-made, uh, ultimately, it has, it has a very short sh shelf life because people are fickle. They change like the weather. <laughs> but those of us who, who stay, who stand on God's word, God makes you like a fortress. You're not changed, nor are you uh, affected, affected by outside influences. But the Lord is a keeper and he's a way maker. So I love you, my friends. Thank you for joining me today. As you know, I'm coming up on uh, uh, just a few days now on my a 31st pastoral anniversary, and I want to say 35, I mean 35, look at me, I'm, I'm taking away some, thank you sir, I'm taking away a few years. I want to say to you, thank you for your prayers and your support of these years that we've known each other. I want to thank the God of the Bible who has watched over me and have kept me and have, has enabled me to preach the word of God Sunday in and Sunday out, Thursday night in and Thursday night out, to deal with the ebbs and the flows, the vicissitudes of ministry. People come and people go. Uh, we've, we've ministered through COVID. We've ministered through various things. We've ministered and stood on the word of God as trends have come and gone, as, as attacks have come and gone. And someone and said, well, preacher, what is your secret? How have you lasted uh, these 35 years? I said, well, I have several. Number one, I got some good people praying for me. I have a tremendous wife standing before me, but more standing with me, beside me. But I tell you, I got to thank God for the saints of God. I thank God for a praying daughter who can preach, pray, and sing. I thank God for a born-again uh, son-in-law. I thank God for loved ones. I thank God for a praying mother. I thank God for the late, great mother, Willa Dean Turner, who, who recently caught the wings of the morning and went to heaven. She's with Jesus now. And you hear me talk about my pastor all the time. And uh, of the last uh, seven years, I want to thank God for being a part of uh, being the prelate of North Carolina Third. That that position has connected me to some of the most powerful saints of God on this planet. If I start calling names, I'll get in trouble because I've I'll fail to call some names that I should call. But NC Third, thank you for your support. And my friends, I can't say enough.
about the upper room, church of God in Christ. I believe that God has graced this preacher for the last 35 years to pastor the greatest church on earth, a congregation that circles the wagon, a congregation that when we go through persecutions, they do not forsake me, but instead they say, man of God, we're standing with you. A congregation of people who pray for me. Oh, I don't know if you caught the footage of the prayer we did last Sunday night. Oh my, if you didn't, it's out there, look it up. We, the men came together, we joined with our women and we prayed over some of the finest church girls and all of the body of Christ. And they're not the ones that Beyonce described, but they're the ones that the Bible described. Yes, 35 years. I thank God for getting saved by a church of God in Christ preacher, the late great James Henry Turner. And uh, I followed him into the church of God in Christ. And it opened up a whole new world for me that I did not know existed. And now here I am, my friends, 35 years later. By the way, you've heard the story before. I didn't know when I got saved. I didn't know I, that I was going to last. As a matter of fact, I didn't go to church to get saved. My mama told me about a preacher who would play basketball with us, wrestle with us, and things like that. I just wanted to see uh, who that person was. It was a novelty. And uh, I ended up listening to him. Now, I will say what caught my eye also was the sisters on the choir. I figured that uh, uh, maybe I could get me one or two of them. And uh, yes, I'm being honest. And I sat there and paid attention to what was being said from the pulpit. And my friends, I got saved. Jesus saved me that Sunday morning. I left the church born again, not knowing how long I would stay. But I said, I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. And I'll never forget that Monday. Uh, a young lady on the bus said to me, oh, Pat, you won't last but two weeks and you'll be back out here uh, like the rest of us. And I probably wouldn't have lasted a week had you not said that. But God knew what, what I needed to hear. And I purposed in my heart that if I didn't stay saved but two weeks and one day, I was going to meet her challenge. I've always been like that with challenges. And I did not, in trying to make it for two weeks, I did not think about her challenge again till about two years later. And I said to myself, if I can live this life for two years, I can do this from now on. And here I am now. I was 16 years old then. I'm in my 60s now. I'm so grateful for every day that God has kept me. And I'm grateful for the 35 years that the Lord has allowed me to pastor this great church. We're sitting in our uh, third church building. God has blessed us to grow. Here we are, having built a school. We no longer uh, have the school, we sold it. Someone said to me one day, they said, would I heard your church close, your school closed? I said, that's what you heard? So no, it didn't close. We sold it. We, we carried it for 18 years. We did it for as long as God told us to. And then uh, when it was time to move on, we moved uh, on to, to follow what God uh, has led us uh, to do. And, uh, and it was one of the greatest moves that I ever made. I'm telling you, for the ministry, uh, one of the greatest moves that we ever made. Building it was one of the greatest moves that we, we ever made. But how many know when God says the time is up, it's, it's, it's wise to move with God. So it's been, a, it's been a wonderful time. And the ministry is in a better place than it has ever been. God has blessed us these, in these 35 years. We paid off all of our debts. There's no mortgage on the ministry whatsoever. God is good. And oh, we're constantly reinvesting in the church, keeping it beautiful, trying to get the best of equipment, the best of things that we can do so that we can serve the, the best of things that we can get so that we can serve the God of the Bible with all our might and with all our strength and to worship him as a holy and, and righteous God. I'm going along with this, but just thinking about the things that we've seen 
over these last 35 years and the last two years. There was nothing like it. But I tell you what, through that COVID, God proved to be faithful. And people thought we were going to die. People thought that we were leading the people astray. It's going to break out at upper room. There's going to be deaths everywhere. And God kept us, my friends. He promised to give me a King Asa blessing, the eyes of the Lord running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward the Lord. And I'm here to testify that God did just that. So I want to thank God. I want to, I want to thank the God of the Bible for his faithfulness. He's been better to me than I've been to him. He's been more faithful to me over these 35 years than I've been to him. I can't think of anything that he's done for me that I deserve. I can't give myself credit because that all goes to him. I'm certainly not sitting here 35 years later because I was a sharp, because I'm the sharpest knife in the draw. Everybody who knows me knows that's not the case. I can't say that I'm the wisest guy. I can't, certainly can't claim to be the coolest, and I doubt that I'd win a popularity contest. <laughs> but I tell you what, for the last 35 years, I've been wise enough to grab hold to God's hand and to not let it go. Grab hold to God's truth and declare whatever happens, I'm going to stand on it. And it's been the heel that I'm willing to die on. Thank you, God of the Bible. Thank you, my friends and brothers and sisters out there who have supported this ministry and stood by me. And I want you to meet me tonight. Ah, uh, oh, I'm I'm fired up. I want I, I got some. I, I have something to tell you. So I want you to meet me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for. Bible study. Yeah, we're going to study the word of the Lord together. But thank you for the way you've stood by me. Thank you for your prayers. The anniversary is going to be great. I thank you even for your financial support. And if you don't have a dime, I just thank God for you. I love you. I pray the blessings of God on your life. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you and cause his face to ever shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you tonight right here, the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ. Or for those who are streaming, wherever you will be watching us from, I look forward to our walking in the scriptures together.